The only easy day was yesterday. Welcome to the only easy day was yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. When looking to take on a new challenge in life, mentors can make the difference between success and failure. I'm Daniel Fletcher. Today, we get some wisdom from an NSW mentor. Check it out. Joe, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. I appreciate it. Um, It's not too often we get to sit down with someone with your experience and learn a little bit about what you do. Um, Hopefully, we can can dig in deep and find out all the things that uh, most people would be asking at home. Um, For starters, um, what is uh, a mentor in the SEAL school or the SEAL SWIC or NSW environment? A mentor is someone that they can uh, go to and find out what they need to do to get through their proper pipeline of training. And uh, it's good to have one, especially these days, because there's so much stuff out on the internet. Uh, kind of want to keep it simple, but at the same time, give them the information they need and show them kind of in a way, if they come to training, what, uh, what's going to be expected of them. So at what point in the recruiting process do you normally kind of interject or become involved in the recruits' kind of actions? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, what happens normally is uh, uh, if they don't know they need to go to the recruiter, they'll call us or they'll call a friend of ours or someone that's, you know, in the teams or in one of the spec ops programs, and then they'll be directed uh, to myself, which happens quite often. And, of course, I have to turn around and direct them to their naval recruiting station. So they go to their naval recruiting station in their area, and uh, they have to have a physical before they can work with us. Once they have the physical, they are you know, more than welcome to come down and work out with our what we call boat crews. And we run boat crews in different areas depending on the size and the location of the specific naval recruiting district that they're working with. So it's really kind of step one into naval special warfare. Exactly. Step one is to make sure that they are physically uh, capable and don't have, you know, some sort of anomaly where it's going to hold them back or get them hurt when they're training with us. Okay. So what types of, I, I guess you kind of touched on it, um, people thinking that they can kind of fast track into um, the Naval Special Warfare program by by knowing somebody or, you know, what's the fast way to do this? It seems like that's, right. that's first the first thing. you got to kind of bring them down to ground zero and say, hey, we start from the beginning here. What other types of uh, maybe anticipations do you think people have that aren't accurate? To the program. Well, a lot of times if they don't have a brother or an uncle or a father in the teams and they, uh, they don't know the proper method, you know, they get on the internet, they see what they want to do, and they go from point A to point C without going through point B. And point B is going to that naval recruiter. Because uh, regardless of how y- y- they want to handle it, they're going to go in the Navy first, and they're going to go through boot camp first, okay. and then they're going to get in their pipeline if they keep their scores and they keep doing the PST and they get stronger. So would it be fair to say your responsibility is kind of to, to guide recruits through the process? Right. And what I have to tell them, I end up saying this quite a bit, is go get a recruiter and get a uh, physical through the United States Navy. They'll, they'll go to their local MEPS. Mm-hmm. And uh, once they do that and they get approved by the doctor, then they can come and work out with their boat crew. Can you describe a little bit about what you mean by when you say boat crew? Yeah, well, you know, it may be a little bit different than the different NRDs, but basically the way that we do it here, and we find it works pretty well, is I'll have a boat crew leader and I'll have a boat crew assistant. So just like you would have in a platoon or in, you know, in the military, you're going to have a guy in charge, person in charge, guy, girl, whatever, Mm -hmm. and then you're going to have his assistant, and between those two guys, they kind of have the responsibility to line the guys up and run the boat crew. And that way we have control and we know who's going to be there, and uh, we know that the person there has already been checked out by the boat crew leader. He knows that, okay, is this guy, is he working with a recruiter? Does he have a, you know, does he have a, a, a physical? And, uh, and then he can get to meet and greet, and then we try to get him in, you know, in, incorporated into that uh, boat crew. And from there, and they got to get teamwork right off the deck. So there's boat crews all over the United States? Well, yeah, there is. The, the, the main thing with the boat crew that I find is it puts people, it, it makes those guys, gals responsible uh, within that boat crew to take care of that boat crew and to get the word out that, hey, we're going to train 
uh, zero, whatever time it is, you know, be there, be square, whatever, and uh, get the job done. And it makes them responsible. So is the goal of the boat crews to, to prep these people for boot camp? Uh, yeah, basically the boat crew, you know, we do workouts on a daily basis depending on where you are and how many people show up. The bottom line is that uh, it, what it does, it makes them responsible to be someplace at the right time and then, of course, the workout. You know, the workout's the meat of the thing, the running, the swimming. And uh, in this area, fortunately, we have quite a few pools to work with. Uh, but a boat crew, is, it, it adds the military side to it. It makes people responsible. And, uh, you know, my guys, usually the guys that are working out of here, they usually know who's going to be there. They can tell me a day ahead of time. Uh, uh, for instance, they'll send me a, 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 you know, a quick text in the morning and say, we got five guys or three guys. Today we had five standing by to get on the base. And, of course, they can't get on the base because they're civilians. So we make arrangements to pick them up, usually myself. And then the first thing we do is a swim, and then we do a run. And what it does, it organizes these guys, gals, so that they have a way to get in better shape. Okay. Once the gate is open, and the gate is getting a military physical and being approved by, you know, their recruiter at a recruiting uh, station in the district. Can you take a little bit of time and explain to potential candidates to become SEAL or SWIC operators, who are these boat crew um, managers? I don't know if the right word is manager, but um, the people that are kind of running these teams or these exercise kind of outfits, so to speak. Yeah, the mentors and the coordinators run the boat crews. And what we like to do is have the boat crews basically run themselves. It's going to be a little bit different in the different districts, depending, again, on geographical and the size. You know, we've got, last time I knew, we had 12 million people in this, in this district. But you may have districts that have several states, and uh, they'll still only have one coordinator and one uh, uh, mentor. The bottom line on that is that the, right now the mentor and the coordinator control the boat crews and uh, they're the only ones that can guide the trainees okay. and instruct them in swimming and swimming technique and, and so on. Based on geographics, again, it's going to be different. And one of the things about this whole job is that it, is the, the, every district's cut into several different states or three different states. And so the bottom line is they've all got different places to go and things to do. For instance, in Las Vegas, we have a boat crew in Las Vegas, and we, have a, uh, we are fortunate to have a person up there in charge of the boat crew that uh, was an air crewman, tried to get through buds, and now he's a reservist. And uh, he runs the boat crew up there, and he has a real good idea what needs to be done. And so he's a plus, and he runs a good boat crew. But it's always going to be different. You know, in one, in one particular area, you might just have one or two guys and they kind of have to run their own boat crew. So uh, what's important is they fill out a log every time they work out, and they ship that log to us, usually scanned or whatever. That way we know that they're doing the workout. Okay. So after, after this step of meeting a, a recruiter, um, getting involved with the boat crew, um, how long are they kind of in this, this stage uh, before they're then off to boot camp or the next step, and how are you involved in that process? Yeah, that's a good point. The, good question. Uh, what happens is they work with the boat crew until they get good enough to be a good enough swimmer, you know, and do enough push-ups and pick up a contract. And the contracts aren't that easy to get because the contracts will put our guys in with the other 25 districts, and they all go back to headquarters, and headquarters puts them up on the wall and starts looking at the scores. So they'll work with us until their scores get good enough and they pick up a contract. Okay. So they may be with us a month or they may be with us six months. We've got kind guys that have been around nine months or a year. So you talked a little bit about um, testing, testing these uh, people, uh, these applicants mm -hmm. um, or potential recruits. Walk us through a little bit about what that testing is like. Mm. Well, yeah, they got to do a, what's called a PST, physical screening test. And a physical screening test consists of a swim with a 10-minute rest. And then uh, after the 10-minute rest, they do push-ups, and they have a two-minute rest. And then they do sit-ups, and they have a two-minute rest. And then they do pull-ups. And they get a 10-minute rest, and they got to do a run. And uh, we try to hold the line on that and keep the times as exact as we can because when they go to boot camp, and we explain this to them every time, when they go to boot camp, they have that amount of time between each one of those because... 
There may be 35, 40 guys on deck. I've had that many before. Right now, about 25 or 30. And there's myself and the coordinator and maybe a couple of other scouts helping. But it's hard for us to hold that line because we have to travel between the pool and, you know, where we do the push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and then to the track. And so what I try to impress on, on, on the trainees, the prospective uh, spec ops folks, is that we're going to try and hold them to the time as act as we can because when they get to boot camp, there's enough manpower there to make them do it in that amount of time. And they will do it in that amount of time. And so time is of the essence in this PST. And uh, usually they do pretty well. We, you know, you guys got seven minutes to get from here to there, and then you're going to get a three-minute demo, and boom, that's ten minutes. We're doing the next evolution. So it's important that they stay to the timeline. The PST, is that something that's been around for a while? Is this kind of a newer development? Well, I took it in 73, 1973. So it's, I understand it's always been the same with maybe a little bit of deviation as far as which uh, evolution comes first. But the same basic movements. Same basic, yeah, same basic test. Where can uh, folks find out more about those specific requirements that are in this test? On the uh, SEAL SWIC website. Okay. Yeah, and that's the one that I would use. Uh, I, I advise to use that because there's a lot of stuff out there, and I say stuff. A lot of it's good. Don't get me wrong, but the Seal Swick website will give you the information you need to pass that test. Okay. Uh, to know what the parameters are to pass that test, you'll have to get. You, they'll have to pass the test. Okay. Okay. Can you describe a little bit of uh, your training kind of philosophy in, in getting these boat crews? kind of up and running, maybe how that might differ than some of the other philosophies out there for training? Well, we start right from the beginning, and the beginning is usually I want to see them groomed well. If they're not groomed well, they'll do push-ups. Amazingly, I ran into that this morning, and I'll run into it tomorrow. I think hygiene's a big deal with us, with our boat crews, and they understand that. On time, on target, don't be late. Uh, I do it almost every morning, and I, the only times I don't do it is when I say I'm not going to do it. And I'm at that gate at 6.15 when here in San Diego, and uh, if they're not there, then they don't, they don't get to swim. On time, on target's a big deal. It's just the basics. Philosophy here is crawl, walk, run, and you're going to crawl a long time. Just to put that in perspective, they're going to go to boot camp, then they're going to go to their pipeline. They're still crawling. Now, each one of these phases, they crawl, then they walk a little bit, and then they run. You know, they get out of buds, they go through hell week, they, they, uh, they, then they start walking a little bit, and then they go to advanced training, they start all over again. They crawl, they walk, they run, they learn weapons and all that stuff. And then they get through there, and guess what? They go to the teams, and they're all excited, and they're junior man again. They're, they're, they're crawling again, and they're going to crawl, walk, and run until they get in that platoon, and they become the leading petty officer or the chief or, you know, lieutenant in charge. So we're talking three, four years here. This is nothing that's going to happen for these trainees overnight, and they need to realize that. They need to realize that they're going to put some real time and real effort into what they're going to get. Yeah, for but it's worth a period it. of time. That's right. That's right. So uh, that being said, what other kind of advice or words of wisdom would you dole out to these guys and gals that, that want to enter the program? Patience. Patience. Know what you want. Uh, do a, Look into what you want. We have, uh, we still today, we have Trainees that come and they, they, they go down and they get their examination and they go through MEPS and they, they take their, uh, they got to take an ASVAB and they do all that. And then they get up on deck and why are you here? Well, uh, I'm afraid of the water and I want to face my fears. Well, we can do that for you, but, you know, let's make sure that what you want to do is get out the other side and you want to operate. You want to be a Navy diver or you want to be a SEAL or you want to be, a, you know, you want to rescue people out of a helicopter. Do you think that there's a lot of kind of difference there in expectations, people what maybe joining for the wrong reasons or, or thinking things are a certain way but they're not? Is that something you face a lot? Yeah, I have a good example of that. I had a, uh, I just came back from Las Vegas. We have a boat crew up there too, and good boat crew. And, and uh, there was a, a fellow up there and he was, he was 23 years old and he was in the back of the group. And I, What's your name? You know, my introduction, the whole thing. A little, a little harsh maybe, but what do you want to do? Well, I want to be a diver. I want to be a Navy diver. Why do you want to be a diver? I want to face my fear. I'm afraid of the water. And I told him, I said, well, you know, you face your fear by getting a face mask standing in the shower. I said, you want to be a diver, you're going to learn how to run gear and everything else. Well, he stayed there during the, you know, during the PT set session, and uh, 
He didn't come back the next day, but that doesn't mean we're going to write him off. You know, he, I just want to give him a, a being a diver, you don't, you know, you don't go th be a Navy diver to face your fear. You can, that can be part of it, but remember, you got to learn how to be a diver and you save your own life and save other people, a lot more to it. So it's a good motivation. Uh, it's up to him. Right, right. Yeah. Is, is a large part of your job finding better talented people or more talented people and getting them through the pipeline successfully? Uh, you know, it's, uh, that's an interesting question because I don't really, uh, I really don't put a stamp on someone. It doesn't matter who they are. I, I like to see them in action a little while. And uh, there's a lot that come and they stay a day and they, and they come stay a week. And, um, but once they get with the boat crew, it's pretty easy to tell that, hey, they like what they're doing here. Maybe there's, you know, you can see it. You can see it registering. Maybe there's something I want to do here. Maybe I can really put up with this. And then we got guys that come in and, boom, I, I don't have to worry about this guy. I know what he wants to do. Will they make it? That's up to him. But this guy's in, in for the, he's in for the long run, you know. What are the types of things that you see in those people that are unique? There's a little bit more maturity, you know. And it's, it, but then I can contrast that with the fellow that wanted to be a diver. He's 23 years old and the, the, the maturity there, He's married and he wants to face his fears, but he wants to be a diver. I had a, a person that came here. We shipped him off to boot camp a couple of months ago, and uh, he wanted to be a SEAL, and he couldn't swim, could not swim. And so we taught him how to swim. And, I mean, he took – the guy learned how to swim in a week and a half, and that's tough, side stroke. Side stroke's a tough stroke. If you don't know how to do it, it's tough. And he learned how to do it in a week and a half, and he became a very good swimmer. He got it down, uh, down the nines, which is good. And how long are they swimming? What's the distance? Uh, 500 yards. So 500 yards in nine, under nine minutes is a... Under nine's real good, yeah. Under good. 10's good, yeah. Kind of a, put a bookmark on them. Right, kind of. right. Yeah, and they're just a little bit higher, you know, it's a little bit higher scores. So let's say I'm uh, showing up at a boat crew mm -hmm. and I, maybe I know about the PST already. Maybe I've administered a test myself and I'm, I'm ready to go. You know, I'm confident and you, hell, maybe you even like me. Um, how long will I be in... Uh, this boat crew before I'm able to kind of move on to the next step? What's the minimum there? Well, it's going to depend on your scores, okay? SO score is obviously a little bit tougher than the other scores, but what we're looking at is uh, you need to have um, your swim needs to be 11 or less, okay? And your, your push-ups need to be 50 or more, and those are minimum scores. Mm -hmm. And your sit-ups need to be 50 or more, and your pull-ups need to be 10 or more, SO, and six or more for EOD, it varies. And of course your run needs to be, um, run's gonna be 1030 or less for uh, SL. So is it really just, is it really just that simple? Hit the numbers, move to the next step, is that? Uh, yeah, you gotta hit the numbers, but then you got your ASVAB in there, you know, your test that you take when you come in the Navy. And you've also got, uh, got your ASVAB, we still have what's called a seesaw, it's a personality score, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, you get a one, two, three, or four. I haven't seen any fours. I've seen a couple threes. Twos are a little more prevalent. Usually most people get ones. There's several things that you are weighted on. So, you know, you may get just passing scores for your PST, but if you got a good seesaw, let's say you got two or three, this is all taken into consideration as any board is in the United States Navy when you're put up there with a bunch of other folks. So it depends, but you're better off to do the best you can on all of these because that's gonna make a lot of difference. Um, maybe we could paint a little bit closer of an accurate picture in terms of time. Is this something that people can expect to be doing for a month, six months, a year? Depends on your scores and how far you're gonna go. Okay. It's just a scoring process like anything else. And you get a hard look, take a hard look at them, put them in the draft, your draft picks them up or dump. And they have no idea because they're going in the draft with 25 other districts. Okay. So it's best for them to do the best they can. Is there anything that someone can do to prepare themselves other than the PST and the physical aspects um, to do better in that draft process? Uh, yeah, make sure that what they want to get into is what they want to do. The more that they can find out about the program, the better off they are. You know, you may take a guy, say, comes in, he wants to be EOD, and all of a sudden, you know, he gets into training and everything, and then he suddenly realizes that EOD is 50-plus weeks of working, you know, in a classroom. You know, figuring out gases and, and, you know, all kinds of bombs and everything. So, yeah, they want to think about that. 
Well, hopefully this um, podcast can serve as one of those levels of additional information to help people because it seems that is reoccurring. More information is key. Know where you're at, self-reflection, knowing what you want, having goals, such, such. I'm always impressed with someone that comes in and they know about what the program, they've talked to their dads, their whatever, and they know things about that program. Right. So after this, um, this boat crew process, whenever people ship off to boot camp, how, how are you connected to them at all through that process, if at all? I'll have to tell you the truth. What I find out about the people that are in, going through boot camp and onto their pipeline, I hear it through the guys. And what that tells me is that boat crew is watching each other, and they're telling each other how they're doing. So it's word of mouth. Word of mouth, yeah. I don't specifically watch for my people to get through. I like to see them get through, but... Uh, if they prepared themselves correctly and they have the right attitude and mindset, they'll get through. It's hands off at that point. It's hands off, yeah. So with that being said, what types of tips or tricks do you think you could interject into this process that um, from the insider's perspective you think would be really beneficial to hear? Um, I think uh, proper preparation. You know, if, if, if a prospective uh, spec ops trainee is interested in a program, I would highly recommend that they take a hard look at the program. They, they can find a lot of information at the SEAL SWIC. Go in there and take a look at it and, and, and for them to realize that, uh, you know, they're going to have a job if they've got a wife, a girlfriend, this and that, that if they really want to get through training, all five of those programs are going to take a lot of concentration. So they're going to need to dedicate themselves to it. It's total dedication. And especially when they get in their pipeline. And, when you uh, say pipeline, what do you mean by that? What, once they go through boot camp, mm -hmm. they'll be slotted out into one of the five programs that we have. Okay. So they'll either go SEAL, EOD, SWIC, Navy Diver, Air Crew. And they need to take a hard look at that because that's, that's the crux of what they're going to be doing. And they're going to be doing it for a long time. Uh, you know, they're going to give up their home and they're, you know, they're going to go away from the family. I mean, they need to take a hard look and say, you know what, I really want to do this. I know I did. You know, I wanted, I really wanted to do that, but I had to leave, leave things behind. So they need to realize that that's what they're going to have to do. It's total dedication, especially SO and especially SWIC and EOD. Is that because of the Diver. workload involved in, in, in that training or the, yeah, the, the, the criteria that correct. needs to be met or both? That's correct. Well, it's, it's total concentration. You know, you don't go on and off without total concentration, and then everything goes to, pardon my language, hell. And without total concentration, uh, you know, you're lost. And these, these trainees will be put in position where they need total concentration. They need to be dedicated to what they want to do. They want to be totally dedicated, you know, they want to be in this game. Yeah, look, the high it, so I guess you're kind of more so looking for people that maybe already have that. It's not so much that you can turn anybody into a, a Naval Special Warfare operator. You kind of can develop some aspects of it, but a lot of this seems to be um, kind of born with focus or born with intent or drive. Yeah, it's interesting because I listen to the stories. I always ask them why they want to do it. Yeah, that's the first thing you add, why they want to do it. And uh, so you've got a guy, well, you know, I was walking down the street and I seen a poster and da-da-da. And then you got the other guy, well, I've been looking at being a SEAL since I was in eighth grade, you know. So taking so, a long look at that why seems right. to be pretty and, you important. You know, you don't make a judgment there, but if you watch what happens, you know, as this thing unfolds, if you watch what happens with a person, that trainee that's been thinking about this, you know, since grade school, where he had a, you know, he had an uncle or his dad, I mean, you know, it doesn't always work well for the, for the son, but a lot of times, 75% of the time, he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's getting into, and he wants to have the pride of getting through there. But he knows what he's getting into, too, because his father's going to tell him, his uncle's going to tell him, and his friend's going to tell him. So is that so, a big part of, of your job, is kind of informing people, hey, this is, this is what it's going to be like, this is the type of responsibility you need, this is gonna ha how you're going to have to act, it's not getting easier from here, well, is that a yeah. lot of it? I, I, I take a little bit different, yeah, I tell them that for sure, but I take a little bit, I show them. I show okay. them, yeah. Pay attention to detail, crawl, walk, run. Uh, you know, it's one team, one fight, everybody drops down, they push them out. That's the basic premise, you know. Uh, gotta, gotta learn to work as a team. Gotta be a team member. That seems a huge part of it, and especially oh, yeah. since it's coming into the process so early. Oh yeah. It's interesting to watch them get that. They finally get that, you know. 
I know they got that when I, I show up and there's 20 guys standing there. Because they're holding they each other just, accountable. Yeah, oh yeah. Right. They, just, they just want to do this thing. And they know when I step out of the car, most of the time somebody's messed up, they drop down. I mean, that's, they want discipline. You can tell when a guy or a gal wants discipline. They stay. They get it done. We've got a female up in Las Vegas, and uh, she has brought her run from 16 minutes down to 12. Will she get there? I don't know, but I'll tell you what. She's in the game. That's important, yeah. Yeah, she's in the game. And anybody like that's going to get a lot of help, you know. Because we're gonna, we're gonna assist right, them. That's right. right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna help them out. out you know? right. Yeah, the recruiter, myself. We're gonna you know, boat crew leader. When recruits show up to a boat team, what can they expect to see and do? Well, uh, what usually happens, and I'll take a, I'll just take, let's take a day without the pool, without the swimming pool. Uh, guys will start out. And we're really fortunate here because we have the beach. So our guys start out with a 45 minute soft sand run. Now they can run down the beach in the soft sand and come back to hard pack, or they can run down the beach in the hard pack out by the water and come back up soft sand. But they're gonna do that way. They're gonna do half in the soft sand and half on the beach. Number one, it's good running and it takes some effort. Number two, it's a lot better on your joints. And I just expect that the guys to do that. If they come on in for the swim in the morning, these are just examples. It's different where you don't have ocean everywhere. We don't have pool everywhere. If they come in early for the, in the morning to, to do the pool work, they still will be standing tall uh, to do the run afterwards in the sand. And these are the, this is, once they get that going, they feel better. They know they feel better. They know they're on their way. And that makes a lot of difference. And then after that, uh, they'll bust the gate, usually about 10 minutes to 11, and uh, they'll meet up with me again, and then we'll, we'll either do some more swimming or we'll do some calisthenics. And when we do calisthenics, we do just the basic top to bottom workout of the body. I introduced the boat crew up in Las Vegas to uh, turnover boat crew, so the, the, the person in charge knows what's going on. But I, I introduced them to a buds type PT. And it's the same PT I've been doing for 45 years. And it, I can do this PT in 30 to 35 minutes. I did it this morning uh, before they got here. And uh, I introduced it to the guys in Las Vegas, that boat crew up there. It took me an hour and a half to get halfway through it one day. And then the next day they came back at 0400 in the morning. We started at 430. It took me another 45 minutes to get through the rest of it. And I still wasn't totally done. So what I try to introduce is I would rather see you do one push-up right than to do 100 the wrong way. And so it's important to pay attention to detail and and, uh, you know, the best, the only thing you really have to go to war with until we give you all your equipment is this. You know, you, you just have your body. That's it. So you have to be in good shape. In all five of those programs, you've got to be in good shape. People's lives depend on you being in good shape and knowing how to use your, your gear. And who's going to give somebody a million dollars worth of gear if they don't know what the heck they're doing and they can't handle it? Or know how to take care of themselves. Exactly. Exactly. So is being a part of this boat crew um, a requirement? to go through the pipeline? Everybody wants to, to be part of something. And so, you know, the guy that's the boat crew leader, he went through the same thing maybe four months prior or maybe, you know, six months prior or maybe a month prior. It just depends on where we're at. I'll take the senior guy, the guy that's been doing it, the guy that's doing good. Or, and if, if, let's say the guy's doing good and he, then all of a sudden he ends up not doing good. Maybe he's got some sort of problem or something. Well, he'll be fired and I'll move the, the assistant up, just like the military. It's gotta be handled like the military. Uh, doesn't got to be, but it works better that way. So this is a big resource, a, a huge resource, and I would say a, a big advantage to, to being a part of one of these crews. Um, as a mentor, what other aspects are you really largely involved in? Well, I've got the paperwork end of it. I did, uh, today I'll go back and put the guys in what's called the tracker. Uh, they do the PST tomorrow, and all those scores go in, their official scores, and they'll go into the tracker, and the people back east, the headquarters can read the tracker, so we can follow these trainees from day one all the way through. The people that are looking at these guys when their name's on the wall and they get drafted and they go back there, they can look in the tracker and see what this guy's been doing. So it's very important that what they do and how they react and, and what the, their scores and just if they've got an anomaly or something, you know, they're really good or, well, this guy here, he's a little... We, we can, in a couple of words, put that in the tracker and we can follow these guys, which that, is that something is very, know. very good to have. I would imagine it, it, it's a it would be comforting to know and also good advice to know that um, the days you show up and what you do, your performance, your attitude, 
it's tracked. It's, it's tracked. not just one guy looking or nobody looking when you're taking a break. Yep. Um, this is something that's from the, the step one that's right. measured. Yep. So they show up, they sign in, they sign their name. Everybody that worked out today has signed their name, their evolution, the location, the evolution, what they did. Some guys swam, so they got an extra hour and a half, so they probably got five and a half, six hours. Some guys just did the run and the workout, they got four hours. Today they got three and a half, but they'll make up for it. But just knowing that you, what you're doing there is, is, is gonna affect the draft. Sure, it sure will, yeah. And we, you know, we're looking for the, good, we're looking for the guys that are gonna get it done. And uh, it's competitive, it needs to be competitive. But, uh, you know, they're all, they show up and they work out and they keep coming back every day and hitting the wall. They're good people. They're good people. But we're looking for the best of the best. That's what we're trying to do. I think, you know, it's follow through. Can you set that up a little bit? What do you mean by that? Well, it's, it's, it's from day one, learning your general orders. Okay, this is the Navy. You got to know your general orders. You got to know your sailor's creed, right? Guy shows up and he knows him. It's the first time I've ever seen him. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Crawl, walk, run. Spec Ops is part of the Navy, you know. Without the Navy, we have no Spec Ops. So, so yeah, don't again, put the carriage yeah, before the horse. Exactly. Keep your priorities right. Go through the boot camp, do a really good job, know your general or sales creed, and then go to your pipeline and get it done. Make sure that what you want to do is what you really want to do. Look ahead and look into the background of, of the program you want, it, it, whether, it, whether it be air crew or SO. Do a little bit of research. Don't just walk up and say, I want to face my fears. The bottom line is that uh, do some research. And of course, the younger you are, the less research they tend to do. And they come here 17, 19. Um, I get someone at 23. Usually they've got a pretty solid idea what they want to do. It's all about maturity. But we get, you know, we get guys, gals that are 18. You know, the girl up uh, in, uh, I think she's 19 and uh, she's... I've asked her a couple of times, you sure you want to do this? She's working so hard. She said, yeah, and she's dropping her time down. So I have a lot of uh, belief that she just might get it done, you know? Aside from the physical attributes or I guess physical capabilities of these people that are, that are trying to become Naval Special Warfare operators, what other aspects other than physical fitness are you looking for in, in special operations candidates? Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. You gotta work as a team and uh, of course, character. Character is everything, you know. I don't, we don't want to run into someone that, uh, well, I was late today because my dog ate my home. You know what I'm talking about. We want people with character to start with. And basically, most of the kids that show up on deck uh, have good character. We find out right away if they, if they realize, you know, if they didn't realize what they were trying to get into, we find that out right away. And uh, if they come back and they keep hitting the wall, then that's the kind of person we're looking for. It kind of works itself out. I think it's great words of wisdom there. Thank you for taking the time to sit with us and um, give some knowledge to the recruits. Appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Find out more at sealswick.com and join us again for the next NSW podcast. Heads up, eyes open. Oh.